Okay, so now we're going to vary the initial infection. So this is our 1,000 node network with 10 people initially infected, and we saw it was just all over the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what do you think the average um, percent of people in, who get infected here when we start with 10 infected? I'd say it's like... Or Sorry, is this... This is peak, or yeah, to no, sorry, total, total zero, infected. I'd say zero point two five. Yeah, something around like point two five to point three, just kind of in this area. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen when I instead start with five people infected? Um, well, maybe that will half. Maybe that will become zero point one two five down here. Hmm. I actually don't think it's going to affect much because it'll just kind of set. Um, everything back like a step or two. Okay. Um, so I think we'll see the same general graph, but All right. maybe the time will be different. We can't really see the time on these graphs. Find it. Okay, so here it is. It's it's 25.25 on each step and five people initially. So here's here's the distribution. Hmm. Okay, so... so... It's actually noticeably less in a completely different distribution. So very different shape before it was um, sort of a bell curve um, and now this starts very high and just sort of curves down. Yeah, so what do you see from this distribution? So, well, I mean, most of the times, or at least some of the times, it's in within this very small range, below 0 0.1, but there's a Actually, a fairly large chance that it'll land somewhere out here. So, I mean, it's got a very fat tail on it. Okay. What do you see? So it looks, yeah, it looks like most, most of your cases, um, not many people get infected, but um, it doesn't drop off very fast. So it wouldn't be surprising to see people, um, to see larger portions of the population get infected. But right. it's, it's the average did move down. A little bit. I actually don't know. It seems like you'd have a greater chance to land out here. I don't think this is a majority of the cases. All right. Well, yeah, we could uh, we could actually investigate. Maybe that's what, something we can investigate further tomorrow. Um, let me go down a little bit more. So here's starting with 15 instead of f 5 and 10. And then the next one I did was starting with 25. So let's look at what happens when I start with 25 people. And right. you want to look back and see what, remind yourself what 10 looked like? Or do you, do you um, want to just talk about this as it is? We can just talk about anything yeah. you remember. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so here's 25. What do you see? Um, well, let's see. I think it is more condensed than with 10. I think 10 was more spread out. Yeah, it's starting to look more like the 0 0.3 graph rather than the other 0.25 graph. Oh, okay, that's interesting. What's different between this and the point 0.3 graph, though? Um, I think down here is different. Point 0.3 didn't have much below the mean. And also, I th the average was 0 0.8. Yeah. This one so is it is still lower down. It's still lower down. So the, the, the spreading, on average, for most of the people keeps it from going through the whole population. But when we started with five people, it was way down here, and it was 25 now we're, we're, you know, we're getting between maybe 40% on average. Mm -hmm. Get it? So that's just with a few more people at the beginning. And now I'm going to move it up to, I think I did 100. Yeah. So what do you think, it's, how do you think it's going to change when 100 people are initially infected? Um, it should move the average up again and maybe um, condense the graph in some more. Um. I think it's going to very drastically change it, I think you're going to be almost guaranteed to have, a, have almost everyone get infected. Okay, here we go. Here's what it looks like. Hmm. Well, actually, this didn't change much. Well, it definitely moved in because the scale is much different. Um, so you're much more closely centered around the mean. But yeah, the average didn't move up, actually, nearly as much as it could have, I guess. Yeah, so it's interesting. But this is kind of the difference between our five case, which was here. Yeah. Where things a lot of times don't get that bad. And it just gets rarer and rarer for them to get bad. 
But when I start with a hundred people infected, you know, two thirds of the population gets it. Right. And this is the kind of um, sort of sim real simple idea of what happens when a super spreader hits the network. So I have my network with only five infections or even 10, a small number of infections, and then something happens and boom, now 100 people have it. It spreads, mm -hmm. it, everything gets, gets uh, su substantially worse. Yeah. Um, as you would expect, I guess. But um, it is interesting how if you have an infection sort of near the edge of spreading, A low number of infections without super spreaders tends to not spread that much. But even if it doesn't want to spread that much all on its own, if you get a super spreader in, you can really jump up. Yeah. All right. Good work this morning, guys. <laughs>